Hi ladies, today I'm going to make a very important video and this video in general is going to be one that I am um, not used to making. Um, it's going to be very detailed and it's going to be generally for every woman in the body of Christ, whether you're serving in ministry, uh, you're in a marriage, wife, mother, sister in Christ, um, I am going to share with you the things that I've learned uh, recently, probably over the past year, and um, go really in detail with, you know, what I've been going through spiritually and, um, you know, certain things that can really help you to improve your walk also with Christ. I think I'm going to title this video, How Satan Can Use You to War Against God's Work, whether it be um, work in the sense of ministry or generally hindering God's work in your marriage, hindering God's work as, um, uh, as a mom, you know. So, I'm going to begin by saying that as women, we are very susceptible to the enemy. And when I say that, I mean that most times we're most easily used and infiltrated by Satan. And I know I've made a video about this in the past called Demonic uh, Suggestions and how to overcome those suggestions. But what happened to me, even after I made that video, was something so much deeper that it was past a suggestion. It was uh, a stronghold that was ingrained in my mind. And I could not see that stronghold because it was so deeply, um, it was so deeply ingrained. It was a part of me, a part of my being. And it caused me to always seek to be right or always try to prove myself to be right, even when I wasn't. And so when this happens, you find yourself ignoring people's concerns, ignoring what people have to say, or not even listening to, um, let's say, a helpful rebuke or someone wanted to warn you about something it causes you to totally block out and eliminate those concerns. And so that is what I was dealing with. And over the past two weeks, I've been getting a lot of deliverance and I can, I'm getting new revelation from the Lord because of this because I'm breaking through these demonic strongholds and because I'm receiving, um, you know, so much grace and mercy from the Lord. And that's why I'm making this video because I think it's very important um, for our growth as women in Christ. Now, when I was dealing with these strongholds, I would have times where, and lots of times, where I would not acknowledge a problem that anyone had with me, especially my husband, and it affected our marriage, you know. So what was really happening in my mind was, I'd get thoughts in the middle of an argument or just before an argument in my marriage. And it started very 
as a very subtle thing. I didn't think much of it. But then I started to accept this behavior as myself. And I started to go along with it. And I would have these thoughts like, uh, if my husband came with a concern, I would think, well, you know, that's not really important. Or I would think something like, it's not such a big deal. So <laughs> after many times of my husband coming to me with the same concerns over and over again, I would just turn a blind eye to it because I kept thinking over and over again, well, you know, he'll understand. It's not a big deal. He'll understand. It's not a big deal. Oh, it happened again. It's not that big of a deal. And what I didn't know was that this behavior that I let, I allowed to be a part of my flesh, myself, was becoming um, a burden to my husband. And most of you know that my husband's in ministry and he has a, a lot of things to deal with. So I figure what the enemy was trying to do was use me to subtly gnaw at him like over and over and over again. The problem is I wasn't aware of what it was the work it was doing in him when I did these things. When I turned a blind eye to to his concerns whether I thought it was important or not, whether I thought it was a big deal or not, I had no idea what was what it was doing to him as my husband. And I wasn't really concerned about what it was doing to him because I was so focused on me, you know. I was so focused on what I should be receiving from him what I should be hearing, how he should be dealing with me, that I was totally turning a blind eye to what he was concerned about. And that was a kind of, that was a really tricky thing that the, the, that the adversary used on me. So as things escalated, you know, many times, this happening after a while after a while my husband would react because okay as an individual he has something gnawing at him constantly gnawing at him and he sees what I cannot see he sees my behavior while I'm blind to it so he gets upset and when if whenever he got upset in my mind, I would be more concerned that, well, you shouldn't be upset because it's not that big of a deal, even if he told me it a hundred times. And so I, I was really uh, dealing with this kind of thing for the past year. And as I, as I mentioned before, you know, Deliverance is a process. I've gotten a lot of deliverance before this issue, but now I was faced with a deeper level of uh, sanctification in my walk with Christ and a deeper level of understanding that the Lord was trying to bring me to. And I wasn't getting over that hurdle, that one hurdle that I could not see how to get out of. So there were times when I would get into arguments with my husband and, you know, when that concern came up, I already had the mindset, look, it's not that big of a deal. You can just ignore this, you know. Then he would see that and get more upset because he's not seeing that I care about him getting upset. It was such a it was such a drawn out process. 
I could not put my finger on it, but I knew something was going on with me. I knew something was wrong and that I had to fix something somewhere. But again, I was being used as a tool and I did not even know it. I did not even know that I was being used in this area as a tool to disrespect and to bring discard and to sow seeds of discord because as all this is ha as as all of this is happening people around us are seeing you know the way we were you know scratching at each other with these arguments and it would sow seeds of discord in them because we were in a ministry and my behavior just became a stumbling block basically you know and you know I'm I'm really sorry about that now but at the time I definitely felt that I was right and so what this spirit does it causes you to go on believing truly believing that you're right and truly submitting yourself to that voice that's telling you that it's not a big deal that you shouldn't be concerned about it you know and so little little things would start fires you know little little uh words would start fires because i had this i don't care mentality and for the life of me I could not understand why everyone was so upset and um, it led to me just taking that behavior further and further and further that it became disrespect. I really believe that when you're dealing with a certain issue or a stronghold in your life, demonic uh, suggestions in your mind or in your heart, that Satan really sends reinforcements and he will send them to even make you go back to the way you were you know I remember there was this married couple a man and wife they were part of the ministry and you know when this woman got here she would always, I would always be, you know, asking her, do you want to do Bible study? She'd say, no, you know, something would always come up. Something would always, she, she was never willing to get involved in Bible reading or, you know, all she wanted to talk about was conspiracy videos and this kind of stuff. And I didn't really want to get too much wrapped up into it but all of a sudden she would come and she would uh, you know suggest you know do you believe that you really have to cover your head you know do, do you really believe that God wants you to not wear makeup you know and I would find myself trying to placate her by saying well it's not really a salvation issue so you know and long story short one day it she she brought it up so much that one day I felt well you know maybe it's not a big deal maybe I'm maybe my husband's laws are a, a little too you know maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's him that's the problem because she seems like you know it's not a problem for her her husband isn't saying anything about her um behavior or situation so maybe it is good so i went out and i i actually bought some makeup you know cuz she kept over and over she kept um, saying you know it's probably not that serious and I would tell her well you know my husband really doesn't like um, makeup and 
even before that, I was the one that decided I didn't want to, to wear it. And I was happy that he was on board with that. Because there's sometimes when women decide, well, they don't want to do something and their husband feels, well, you know, I really like makeup. Well, why do you decide not to wear it? But I was blessed in a way that I had decided not to. And then my husband agreed, well, you know, I like you without makeup. So it, it's not a big deal, you know. But she had convinced me so much that I was probably robbing myself of some joy that I went and I bought some. <laughs> I remember I put it on and I came outside and my husband was like, what's going on? And I said, well, do you like it? Do you like how I look? And he was like, why do you look like a clown? <laughs> I said, well, it's, it's just foundation, you know? And he was like, you know, take it off. You know, it doesn't look good. So I, I was really swayed to and fro with, um, someone that was very weak in Christ and I myself being weak in certain areas, you know, I'm strong in some areas, but I'm weak in a lot of areas. And the areas I am weak in are the areas my husband is strong in. And because I wasn't trusting him enough and I wasn't, I wasn't, I really wasn't trusting him with my mind and what was going on in my mind and my heart and all these things happening in me that I did not trust his judgment. And it started that, that divide started to get deeper and deeper as I gave myself over to these things. So there was this one day when everyone was home and we had had a bickering the day before. And I got up and just like that, the whole argument started to be renewed in my mind. And it was like these demons were bringing back the entire thing. It, w it had fizzled out that night. It was a new day and I was standing there doing my dishes and all of a sudden, the whole situation started to replay in my mind. And I remembered the last thing he said. And I remember the last thing he said is, you know, if, you, if you're this upset, you can leave if you want to. He said, if you're this upset, you can go. Just, you can go if you want to. And it was a, it was a, um, it was something that, those demons kept replaying and I, I was convinced in myself that, you know what, maybe I should challenge him and take, take him up on that. Maybe I should, maybe I, uh, maybe I will, you know. I thought, well, maybe I will do this. And it was that will that drove me into something that I could have never imagined would happen, you know. I remember that day going to the back at the church and I felt like I was going to ask him to call um, my parents and set up a flight, you know, for me to, to leave. So I went back there and as I, as I kept walking, I kept feeling more and more hyped, like more and more charged with with a power with something and I knew the, I, the, the the Holy Spirit is like that little voice that tells you mm, this isn't in those moments where you're totally eaten up by some sort of force that is demonic the Holy Spirit is always there kind of nudging you that small voice that's saying maybe this is a bad idea you should, you should just turn around. And my feet just kept going faster. It's like I couldn't stop myself. And at this point, I kind of knew that um, something 
deeper within me was causing me to react the way I did. I looked back and I, I can't say that in my past I ever dealt with this behavior. But it's sort of something that surfaced after a while. As, as I played more and more into it, it became stronger. And so I'm telling you ladies this because the devil can use you to destroy people and to aggravate people and to aggravate your husbands, to aggravate your friends. Even if you are born again, they dwell in the flesh. Deliverance is an ongoing process. The more you get deliverance, the more the Lord shows you things that you need to deal with. And if you don't pay attention to the people around you and trust the people around you that are pointing something out to you or a behavior that's not of God, and you don't take that advice and humble yourself, you're going you're gonna to be used as a tool by Satan to carry out the works of the devil. And it's true. That's just the truth. The more you give yourself over to, the, to, to demonic behavior, the more ingrained it becomes in you, the more it becomes a part of you. And so I saw the fruit of what was going on, and it wasn't good. It was a, deteri a deteriorating, deteriorating relationship with my husband. The fruit of it was seeds, unholy seeds sown in the people around us. The fruit of it was destruction. The fruit of it was no peace. The fruit of it was aggressiveness and just disrespect and all bad fruit. How could it be of God? It wasn't. The Bible says, the Bible says, what husband knows if he can save his wife? Or what, what wife knows if she can save her husband? And it's true. I, I've learned that all these sayings, they're literal. Just as literal as people having demons and having to deal with demons throughout their sanctification process. It's as true as that. We will have to face the Lord individually. And would you like to face him and have him say that you have not qualified, daughter. You have not, you have not done what I've asked of you. You have not humbled yourself. You have not trusted your husband, the head that I chose for you. You have not proven yourself in that area. Then what will we do? When Those of us that are married, it is our marriage that determines our salvation. Think about it. That If that is our ministry, it's our marriage that we have to, to learn to uh, grow in and learn to, we have to grow spiritually in our marriages and towards, towards our husbands. Because if you're calling that your ministry, then when you have trouble in that area and you don't trust your husband's judgment, then you have failed your ministry that God has put um, you into. And if you're single and you have a pastor over you, or you have a spiritual leader over you and you do not take their advice and you don't trust their judgment then you have failed you have failed to please God in that area you you're not coming in line with Christ in that area and therefore your ministry has already fallen if you're a woman that doesn't have anyone over you you're your own boss then you're messed up already. You need to get yourself in line with God's word and you need to find someone that you can trust that knows God's word and you need to submit yourself unto God in that respect and get under that authority that God wants for you. So there is no lone wolf when it comes to female ministry. There is no lone wolf. There is no lone sheep in this sense. You know, you must have a head in some regard for, 
for the sake of the angels and this is what it means because demons can infiltrate a woman that's not covered spiritually and i i ignored my spiritual headship and that's why i felt like i was penetrated in that way by demons i felt that's why i was penetrated because i was bypassing my spiritual headship which was my husband in that regard and all the other men of god that call women to um a certain type of behavior and the fruit of the holy spirit it could be anybody not just my husband it could be any preacher out there it could be any all those sermons that we listen to of men that we respect you can be bypassing their headship as well their spiritual headship and totally given over and to and and uh used by the devil when that happens you're not protected for the sake of the angels the angels the fallen angels can easily infiltrate and use you like a puppet and that is what happened to me and um the day i got deliverance from this i remember um i remember we had we had a discussion that got a little a little heated because I just I just totally decided that I was right you know it was the same thing I was dealing with over and over again and I got tired I got tired of having to deal with the same thing over and over again and when you don't get over a hurdle that God wants you to get over he keeps putting that that's that same thing in front of you over and over the situation is going to replay over and over again until you get it for it could be you in a marriage if you're a woman in a marriage and you're usurping your husband and he's giving into it that will repeat itself over and over until your husband has the courage to look at you and tell you that's wrong and i'm blessed to have a husband that St that stands his ground and tells me when I'm I'm wrong and shows me with the word and washes me with the water of the word that I'm wrong because most times me being a woman and in that line of authority sometimes I can't see what I'm doing is wrong sometimes I don't realize what I'm even saying when it's coming out of my mouth sometimes when in times of anger i don't even listen to myself and i say things that degrade and that really hurt other people and if my husband had not had the courage to say look dear you are wrong and you could be outside of the faith right now you know my husband's told me many times you're outside of the faith right now if you continue in this and those things convicted me convicted me to a point where i was i was i struggled with it but i came to a point where i i was like you know what i'm tired of doing the same thing over and over again and my husband is probably right you know i i should listen to him this time i really should and that was the day i got my deliverance i was sitting in after the our after that little argument happened he went outside and i was sitting in my living room and i was telling the lord you know what i really i really want you to show me if i'm wrong i'm tired of this i just want to i just want to let it go i want it to go and I want you to show me if I'm wrong, Lord. So I went into my room. I didn't know that my husband and another brother were praying for me in the other cabin. But they were praying because I they were tired of it too. You know, they were upset. They had enough. And we just want to get 
we just want to get on in ministry. We don't want stumbling blocks, you know what I mean? So I went into my room and I laid on my bed with on my belly and I laid on my bed and I felt like I had a second body, like like a spiritual second body is how I felt. I felt it moving like uh, moving in and out of my image as I laid on the bed and that's when I knew okay for sure I am not right and if I don't get rid of this I'm gonna be definitely out of the faith as a woman continuing in this manner so I heard the Lord clearly in my spirit say get up and go now get up and go now and let go of yourself of self so i got up and i started moving and i met my husband and the brother in the other cabin and as soon as i went as soon as i got there i started to get deliverance they said they i started to get deliverance and they were they were saying okay you need to sit down and it was the biggest breakthrough that i've gotten since i came to the lord the first time and truly my deliverance is an ongoing process and now that i can see you know, the things that really hindered my walk. If my husband did not tell me I was wrong, it would have hindered my growth tremendously. If I hadn't seen and witnessed myself, my husband himself repenting, repenting to God on his side of the situation and repenting to me, uh, personally he did, on many occasions if I had not seen that while I was still dealing with my issues I would not have grown the way I have today I would not have gotten deliver I, I would not have come to a point of deliverance like I experienced just a few weeks ago I would not grow spiritually if my husband didn't come up to me and say you're outside of the faith this is what you need to change work on it i have definitely learned from my deliverance that i had a few weeks ago my major breakthrough with all of this now that you know now that those strongholds have been removed from my flesh and i've gotten prayer and i've gotten washed with the water of the word by my husband and I've trusted him that something was wrong and I needed to listen and now I I fully trust his judgment on this matter whatever was there I've seen the changes in my life I've submitted myself for prayer I've trusted my husband when I felt like I, when I had, you know, strongholds trying to tell me not to, I saw the fruit of it and it was good. We have a better relationship because of it. And I'm able to connect more with him in an emotional way. I'm able to sit and listen to what he has to say and and say okay i know that you're right about this i stopped defending myself whatever i had those demons that i had caused me to constantly constantly defend myself in every regard in every way i would always point out other people's sin when people spoke about my sin if someone if someone told me about my sin I would say well what about Bobby over there he's he's doing the same thing why don't you tell him about it or I would say what about Sasha over there she's doing the same thing and even worse and you don't even complain 
and <clears throat> I kept constantly pointing out other people's sins and diverting that attention to other people's demise instead of focusing on my own demise. And I thank God that he had mercy on me to deliver me of those things, those strongholds that I had in me. It was it was an extraordinary thing to to experience. I mean, I was I was getting prayer and during the deliverance I was just on the floor repenting for being a stumbling block to so many people. Cuz what I went through caused so many people to stumble. And then the devil just jumped into other people and caused them to make more people stumble. And it just it just had such a big ripple effect in ministry. Things that I thought were not important. And that's what the devil does. He uses, he sows discard into us, into our relationships. And he, t he just takes us into a phase where we always want to prove something we want to prove that we're worthy we want to prove that we're right we want to prove that we're intelligent we want to prove so many things because the devil keeps telling us don't let him do this this don't let him uh try to tell you what to do don't you don't you uh, agree with that that's not even right you know and everything would be biblical and it I would still think that I was right and it's it's a demonic situation and whoever's dealing with it trust me you need to learn to trust your husband and what he's saying about you and what other people can see about you that's close to you and you need to repent for that. I didn't get deliverance until I came to I came to an understanding that I was wrong. I didn't get deliverance until I came to a position where I could humble myself. And it was a very difficult thing to do. It was a very difficult thing to do. And thank God that people were praying for me. My husband was praying for me to come to this area just as I had been praying for him even when I was dealing with this issue I was praying for him to be delivered because I felt like everything was his issue I didn't have any problem he had all the problems I figured he had all the things to deal with and I totally ignore that I'm not some perfect person that maybe I am provoking the situation. I never thought about it that way. And m many times the devil can use us to provoke, uh, p provoke people in these in these situations. They, they, the devil can use us to provoke demonic strongholds in other people you know what I'm trying to say so I'm happy that I got delivered and I'm I am truly sorry that everything that happened had such a major impact and such a ripple effect in our lives and in our ministry I would have never thought it I would have never thought it but now I can truly understand the tactics of Satan and how susceptible I am and how much I need to cling to the spiritual covering of, of people that are more mature than me, not only in Christ, but also in age and just trust their judgment when I can't trust my own judgment. And there are times those that happens where we can't we don't even have good discernment to say well to come to that area. So when these things happen, we have to trust the head that God's placed us under and go to the Lord about it. 
go to the Lord about it. And if you're staring at the Bible and it's right there, it's biblical, there is no way around it. You got to repent. You have to repent. What are you going to do? It's in the Bible right there. And there are many times when my behavior could not even be justified and it was in the Bible right there. Now that I've been set free of those those behaviors that I had, the talking back, which which was provoking, just constantly answering a question for a question or giving rhetorical answers or saying things like, well, you don't, well, you think, or, you know, uh, that's not true, show me it in the Bible, or, you know, things like that. In arguments, I'm, I can see that that has changed in me. That has changed in me. I have a, a more receptive heart to what people have to say to me about certain things especially my husband, I can sit and I can hear him out. I can listen to what he's saying without give, constantly shooting responses to him. Or I can sit without um, judging him in my mind on what he's saying. I can sit and listen to him and trust him even more and I feel like we're more of a team rather than uh, two players in a game that don't like each other. You know, I feel more at ease with him now that I've been delivered this, this past two weeks. And I can communicate better. And I know to acknowledge now when he has a problem. Instead of just saying, well, it's not a big deal. You know, many little things like forgetting keys a hundred times or, or forgetting to do something that he really wanted me to do, uh, which was not anything that was, you know, a, a major issue. It's not like... It's not like he was asking me to do anything extra biblical, but just because I didn't like following his orders or his, you know, his rules of the house, I just, I just ignored it and thought, well, no big deal about it. And it was disrespectful and I've been freed from that too. I can feel it. And it's just amazing what God can do. In our lives you know maybe a year from now I'll be hitting another wall of issues that I've probably had since I don't know probably childhood who knows what's gonna happen next and one thing I know for sure is that when we go through deliverance like this and we humble ourselves every step of the way and it is difficult for me to make this video it is a humbling experience and to to really realize that I was being used for destruction on a level that I could not have even imagined um, makes me sad and I feel I feel sad about it and I just I wish I could change it but I can't I understand that i been through these things so that the Lord can refine me further for ministry and um, I pray that he continues to and I pray that he does the same thing in your life and he brings you to an area where you can see your sin even if your husband has been you know some some woman they've undermined their husbands for so long that their husbands are afraid to tell them what's wrong with them if you're in that situation where you want to repent and you've undermined your husband and the people around you so much that you've brought them under your kingdom and your subjection and you're the head, the kingpin of the gang, you really need to cling to the Lord and 
really cry out to him and humble yourself and repent for taking authority over your husband and the people around you, your pastors, anybody that has been giving you sound, good doctrine and good advice and you've just thrown it to the wolves or put put the pearls into the pig snout, throw them in the pig pen, you know what I that's what I'm trying to say. You threw a good thing away, you have to repent. You have to tell the Lord you're sorry, apologize to the people that you hurt, and put things in order again. Get into your line. Get into your lane and be a woman. Be a woman that is cherished so much by the Lord when she is a woman. You know, the Lord loves when we are women. That's what He made us to be women. But we have to deal with a lot of things, um, a lot of demonic uh, behaviors that we let in, knowing or unknowingly. Um, giving ourselves over to demonic suggestions, not a good thing. Being a woman then is going to be a struggle. And most women that have struggles like this turn to feminism, thinking that that's the way out. And then they feel even more burdened and more out of line. And they feel more aggressive than they would have before they joined that movement. And so as women, we need to just surrender ourselves, let go of self, um, stop judging with our minds and really repent of taking authority over people that we're not supposed to take, take authority over in the ways that we're trying to. So I hope this helps somebody. And... Um, I hope this makes a lot of sense because this is what I've been through and it was not easy sharing it but um I am trying my best to uh free as much as many as I can with this message and um now I'm I'm happy and I'm happy to be moving forward when we get deliverance like this, do remember that we are closer to salvation than we were when we first believed. Believing is first, but it's the process that brings you closer and closer to what the Lord wants you to be. So now that I have received my deliverance, just a few weeks ago, I believe and I feel that I'm not bound in that area anymore. I can tr safely trust my husband and my husband can trust me. And I'm not compulsively saying mean things or compulsively giving disrespect as I once was. Now I'm closer to my salvation than I once was when I first believed. Take care and have a good day. Bye.